Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a quick video. We're just investigating and fixing a fault on this 2016 BMW 1 Series. It's the 1.5 petrol. And this fault code and fault that we're investigating is actually quite common. Just relating to this engine and various other different BMW models and some of the minis as well. And basically the main fault that we're getting, the engine lights on the dash but it is a bit intermittent. It's not always on, it does come and go. And sometimes it's in like a restricted power a restricted power mode as well but again it's a little bit intermittent it does come and go a little bit we've just done a full code we've just done a full code scan with the top down diagnostic machine the main fault code that we've got whenever we've got a vehicle in for a fault we always like to do a full code scan rather than just looking at the engine ecu you just never know it's always worth checking and you might get fault codes in different ecus that can actually help you out as well but there are some other fault codes in this one but definitely nothing relating to the main engine issue that we've got the main code we're looking at in the engine control module, you can just see 118401 is the code and basically mixture control, mixture too lean, deviation too high. So I'm just going to get under the bonnet now to show you what the actual fault relates to, how we've diagnosed it, what you can do to test it. And then we'll just run you on to replacing the item at fault, um, getting it fitted, getting the fault cleared out and giving it a run just to make sure it fixes the fault. Yeah, so we'll crack on now and just get under the bonnet. Right, so we've just come under the bonnet now. Now the only thing that we've got off is just simply the top engine cover. Really easy to get off, just simply pops off. You just see we've just got the cover down on the floor there. Now with any mixture control faults, one of the first things you want to be doing is checking for any air leaks. There's a good chance that an air leak will cause that issue. The first thing we did with this vehicle once it come in was just smoke test it with a smoke machine. Just got one of these smoke pros, really good handy piece of kit, really easy to use. Just simply put it into one of the intake pipes and just you hook the airline up to it. Some of them don't need an airline. Um, but yeah, basically all that does is just fill the intake system up with smoke and then you're looking for the smoke leaking out of anywhere and it's just a really quick and easy test to do to find any leaks if you've got a leak obviously it'll need sorting some bmws suffer with various different air leaks from certain areas like the manifolds and bits like that but basically on this one we've actually found the fault to be what you call the purge valve which is just this little valve there just nicely located on the top of the engine so it's going to be nice and easy to swap over and the way that we've tested it and proved it at fault, basically just used a mini vac, just a vacuum tester there. Just use this to pull the vacuum down. There's various different types of vacuum tester that you can get. Uh, but basically all we're going to do, just to show you how to test it, we're just going to remove this bottom pipe there. You just simply need to pinch that connector up on the top and the bottom, then you can pull it back. But they are quite, they can be quite brittle, they are bit of thin plastic so you do need to be careful not to damage it that's all but basically i'll just get that connector off and then we'll just show you testing it with the medivac i'll just show you the difference between the faulty item and the new item we've basically got a new purge valve just here and if you check the links in the description below i'll put links to these and where you can get them from as well and um, yeah it's quite it's, they're actually quite a common issue common item to fail on this engine so But yeah, we'll just crack on now. I'll just get that off, um, show you the test, and then we'll get on to swapping the other bits over. But you can just see, as well as the main pipe on the bottom there, we've got another pipe there, another pipe on the back, and then the electrical connector there. Then, depending on what the fault was, you might need to electrically test the item to make sure that it's got its correct um, supplies down to it. But obviously, the vacuum test that we're going to do on it proves the item at fault without doing that. So. Yeah, we'll just crack on now, get that pipe off and just run you through that before swapping it over. Now, so just got that pipe off and I've just connected the pipe from the Motivac just into the centre there. And basically we're just going to draw a vacuum now. And what we're looking for, it should hold the vacuum as you draw it down. But you just see if we just do that, it's just releasing, slowly dropping back down to up in there. So it's not holding its vacuum. So what we're going to do now is just pull that pipe off. Just simply swap it over quickly onto the new valve. And I'll just show you what it's doing on the new valve.
Right, so we're just connected to the new valve. If we just draw a vacuum now, you can just see just nicely holding its vacuum as it should do. It's a really nice, simple test that you can do, nice and easy, and it's just proved the item at fault. So all we're going to do now is just crack on, just get it swapped over. And to get it swapped over, it's really simple again, so just pinch that up, pull that pipe out there, electrical connection at the back there. You've just got to flick that little white tab just back to release it so that you can push it down to get it off. And then there's another like push style connector on the back there. But once I've got that off, I'll just show you exactly how that works. Then the valve itself just simply pushes on on this little rubber there, so it just pushes down once you can pop it up to get it off that saucer. We'll just crack on now, get the valve swapped over. So that's the old purge valve out of the way. I'm just show you quickly while it's off. Basically that's the connector there. So just to get it to release, you do just need to flick that little gray bit back there and then it'll allow you to either push that down or if you can just get a little flat bladed screwdriver underneath there, you can just flick that off. And then this connector at the back there, basically all you need to do with that one is just, again, two little tabs, top and bottom, and you can just pinch them up and you'll be able to release it, that's all and then just simply pushes down onto that rubber there that's it so we'll just get the new one swapped over right so to whip that off quickly looks like i'm just gonna have to end the video for tonight crack back on with it i'll just skip through this stage Basically we've just come across a little bit of an issue, uh, the part that we've got is the wrong one. You can just see on the old one there we've got a different valve, different piece coming off there for one of the pipes which isn't actually on this one there so I'll make sure I'll put the correct one for this vehicle in the description. But that's probably something that's worth checking against yours depending on what vehicle um, you're replacing this part on that so. But yeah we'll get the right one ordered now, get back to the video as soon as we've got it, I think it'll be another day, hopefully it'll be tomorrow now before we can get one. But we'll get it fitted. Um, run through clearing them fault codes but as you can see up to now um, it's quite a straightforward way of testing it it's got it's te got it tested we've proved it at fault it's just going to be a case of getting the right part now and getting it on so yeah we'll see you in the video shortly once we've got the new bit right so it's next day now we've just got the new bit you can see we've got the extra fitting on the side there and i'll just quickly just show you bench testing it while the unit's off and in my hand and just how to, how to test it quickly then we'll get it all swapped over Again, this is the old unit. If we just bung it in that end, just bung that pipe up there, we just bump it down, you'll see it's not holding and releasing. If we do that with the new one, you'll see it holds its vacuum there. So, we just quickly get it all swapped over now, and we can get on to clearing the fault codes, giving it a quick run, and just making sure it fixes the fault. Yeah, that's it nice and easy. It's all put back together now. Just put the cover on. All right, so obviously that's fitted now. I'm just going to come back in the car, just do a quick code scan and just clear all them faults out of there just so that we can give it a road test. We know that the, every UC, ECU is nice and clear and then we can um, make sure it's definitely fixed the fault. You can just see we've got two faults in there now and basically it's just got an open circuit fault just on that actual valve as well which is obviously because we've had it disconnected that source so I mean, at one stage i've had the ignition on while it was disconnected so obviously it's just logged the fault on there that's all but yeah let's just get everything cleared and we'll give it a good road test and just make sure let's fix the fault that's all that's turned out to be obviously it's just that simple replacement of that valve there nice and easy to replace Nice and easy to test it as well to prove it at fault. If you're interested in any of the parts or tools used, if you check the links in the description below, I'll put links to everything that we've used and where you can get them all from. And just see, we've just cleared everything out now. Everything's nice and green in there. 
So we've definitely got no faults there. What we're going to do just to finish off, just give it a decent road test, probably five or six mile. Um, once we've done that, as long as it is okay, I'd still just do another scan just to make sure, just make sure no faults have actually gone into any of the ECUs, but not actually put the light on. We'll just update you in the video shortly once we've done that. Just make sure it's fixed it. That's well, just got back from road tests, running absolutely spot on. We've just done another four code scan anyway. It's nice and clear in there, all green, no issues at all. And um, we did about five miles in it, no engine light on, running absolutely perfect, no limp mode or anything like that. So definitely fixed the job, all relating just to that simple valve there. And so, as I said earlier on, I'll put a link to that in the description below if you want to check it out and where to get it from as well. But yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.